What's up TLF family? We're back with another episode about nutrition. And this is more specific to people that are uh, endomorph body types. And if you're not aware of body types, you kind of have three categories. You have your endomorphs, which are rounded in appearance. Your ectomorphs that seem to be very lean, very skinny. Uh, and you have your mesomorphs that are kind of athlete built, very V-type -tape, tapered people. Football athletes, basketball athletes, so on and so forth. So, with endomorphs, we have to understand a few things. Um, and before we talk about what the, what the character traits of an endomorph is, let's talk about what we're trying to achieve. What we're trying to achieve is the most optimal fat loss and muscle retention that we can throughout this person's training career, right? And so to do so, we have to understand and meet the person where they are. So endomorphs typically are what we call insulin insensitive. If you know what insulin is, insulin is a hormone released by your pancreas and it's there to regulate where your food goes. Right? So a little picture over here. Uh, insulin takes your food stuff. This is little balls here, your food, uh, for lack of artistic creativity here, uh, and takes your food into a couple of different areas. Hopefully, we take most of the food and put it into our muscle. If we stimulate our muscle enough with strength training, if we time the nutrients properly, it should all go into this wonderful place here so we can recover, get stronger, and build muscle. Um, some of the rest of it goes to your liver for storage so we can utilize it if we need to during the workout. Uh, but if we have too much stored in the liver, and it stores up as glycogen, which is the, the compound uh, form of a bunch of glucose molecules together, uh, then what happens is it spills over and goes into fat. Okay? So, to understand what we need to do for an endomorph, we have to understand what different foods do to them. So sugar, sugary foods, high carb, carbohydrate foods, typically have a very high insulin response uh, in endomorphs. And they're very insulin insensitive. That means they aren't able to sense the tissues, the muscle tissue, so on and so forth, is not able to sense the insulin that's around. So it's not able to actually uptake the nutrients that you need to go in the muscle cell. So with that being said, we have to be smart in regards to when we put carbohydrate into our body, which tends to have the, the highest insulin response in the body for endom endomorphs. Okay? So you go back here, they can't tolerate carbs well, that we talked about. Their leptin regulation is low. Leptin is a hormone, it's a fat regulatory hormone. Okay? So it helps you regulate fat. So leptin is, is relatively, relatively low in these people, uh, unless you, unless you naturally spike it up with proper training methods, uh, proper timing, so on and so forth. So what do we do? We think about the first meal of the day that's gonna set them up for the rest of the day. We want the hormones to dictate where the fat goes and what they do actually in the muscle cell. So if we eat the first thing in the morning, if we eat something that's really high in sugar and high in carb, uh, the biggest response they're gonna feel is this high spike in insulin and then your tissues are like, what do I do with this? I don't know what to do. My muscle doesn't need it. I haven't been training very hard. So I guess I'll just put it into liver. And then liver is like, well, you're overspilling more and more throughout the day over here. I'm storing more and more. I guess I don't know what to do with this. I'll go into fat. So you end up just storing fat throughout the day, which you do not want. Now, if you're an endomorph, you're training hard, your best bet is to try to get a breakfast that is high in protein and fiber and vitamins and minerals in the morning and a decent amount of fat, okay? Uh, when you do this, you have a pretty pretty good partitioning effect. And partitioning effect just means that you partition the food more so towards muscle and liver than you do towards fat, okay? So you mitigate that response of crazy high insulin, I don't know what to do with this food, so I'm gonna put it into fat. Uh, and instead, you make it a little more tolerable for your body type. So typically what I recommend if you're a meat eater, uh, things like bison, like a lean meat like bison or something like turkey or something like chicken or even fish, uh, and then you can do nuts for your fat. So you can do any, any number of nuts here and then um, pretty much low to no carb at all. Uh, if you want to do a little bit of carbohydrate, if you absolutely need some, I would stick with your low glycemic fruit, like berries, because they have a low effect on insulin, like blueberries and raspberries. But keep the bulk of your macros, protein, fat, 
carbs, and of course, high fiber veggies, okay? Think cruciferous, so like broccoli, like cauliflower, uh, like dark leafy greens, things that are dense in nutrients, but also dense in fiber so you stay full and you feel good throughout the day. Okay, so that's your best bet if you're a meat eater. Now, if you're a vegetarian, I would say things like eggs are a good idea, uh, or fish is a good idea for you, and nuts, uh, berries, and some vegetables. And if you are a vegan, it's a little trickier, but you can make it happen. There is a protein called seitan, I believe it's spelled, let's see, S-E-I-T-A-N, seitan, and I think it's like 21 grams per third cup of protein. You do some seitan, protein, and then lots of veggies, of course, that we talked about before, uh, and then some high quality fat from your nuts. Boom, and then if you really wanna get a little extra protein in, my vegans, you can get hemp protein powder, make a little hemp protein shake, uh, and chow that down as well. So again, if you're an endomorph, whether you're a vegan, vegetarian, or a meat eater, try to make most of your, most of your breakfast uh, uh, comprised of protein, vegetables, some fat, and pretty low on the carbohydrates. If you absolutely have to do carbs, do low glycemic fruit, uh, like berries. Try to stay away from rice and grain and cereal. That's gonna make you just spike up your insulin, and then inevitably you're gonna store food as fat because your tissues are not as sensitive to insulin as the ectomorph or the mesomorph, okay? So that should give you a good little insight into how to kind of set up your day. Uh, another little bonus for, for those of you that are endomorphs and have a hard time with energy, this is a great way to, to spike up some very important neurotransmitters in your body. Dopamine and acetylcholine are one of the most important neurotransmitters in your body to help you feel focused and drive, okay? So those get released pretty, pretty significantly with a with the, with the breakfast that's high in protein and fiber and a decent amount of fat. Uh, also, growth hormone and testosterone, which are hormones, uh, get released a little more with high protein diets. Um, and that's also a good thing, but those, those are important in regards to retaining muscle and burning fat. Okay, so some of the things that are wonderful when you eat a breakfast that is high in protein and low in carbohydrate in the morning if you're an endomorph. Uh, so that should wrap it up for today. Uh, hopefully this has been resourceful for all of you. Uh, this helps a lot of my endomorph clients. And just know that just because you're endomorph, you're not gonna be doomed to being that body type. You can switch into different hybrids. Like you can be an endomezo, where you're shifting more into a muscular build and less into, less, uh, into a rounder build. So as you kind of optimize your lifestyle habits, your, your nutrition, your movement habits, your strength training, you get better able to sense insulin and better able to uptake them into the muscle tissue uh, and prevent yourself from storing it into fat. Okay, so this has been resourceful for you. Uh, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button below, and be stay tuned for my ecto and my mesomorph optimization tools very soon. Just when you thought we were done, I got a bonus for all of you, all you science geeks and nerds out there that wanna understand a little more about what's going on. When we talk about being insulin insensitive as an endomorph, we mean that your tissues specifically are insensitive to sensing insulin rising. Okay, so when you put a food into our body and then insulin naturally goes up, our tissue, our muscle tissue, cannot sense the insulin going up. And we know the job of insulin is to take the food and put it into a couple different sources, right? So if you, if you can't sense it, the tissue can't sense it, it's most likely gonna take it towards fat storage. So it can't really go into your important tissues that you need. So with that being said, being said we have to make sure we optimize our tissue's ability to sense insulin. The best way to do that is train hard, train with strength training, do a lot of compound lifts, things that activate a lot of different muscles at once, deadlifting, squats, gymnastics, things of that nature, to really create a stimulus in the muscles. You tear down muscle fiber, and what basically happens is you have these little receptors on your muscle cell, and they're called glute four receptors, without the E, it's not actually an anatomy term, it's called glute four receptor. Right, and the glute four receptors, they can stay either in a closed position or an open position. This is an open position where nutrients can be taken into the cell, okay? If it's closed, then guess what? It can't properly sense that insulin is here lurking to put the food in there. So it's like, well, I'm gonna stay closed. 
So you have to give, as an endomorph, you have to give your body a reason to really eat a lot of carbs, because that's gonna spike a lot of insulin. And if you give it a reason by strong strength training and you time your food accordingly, time your carbs accordingly, then you can utilize that fact and take all those, those wonderful nutrients and put it into the muscle cell, which is a goal mine for you. More muscle mass, less fat, less fat storage, more awesome you. Much love.